Hey everyone, today we're going to do a, uh, before we get out to Laurel Run um, later this week or after this video, I wanted to cover, I wanted to go back and cover all of my, a bunch of my Laurel Run hikes, pieces of my Laurel Run hikes that are all relevant. I want to walk you through the timeline, the logic of why I went, where I went, what I found. If you haven't seen my past Laurel Run videos, some of them are pretty long, so I'm, I'm going to go through some highlights to bring you up to speed on what I've seen already, things I found, places I've checked in Laurel Run, and also this will give you a better idea of the landscape at Laurel Run, what things look like there, and where we're headed now. Uh, this is going to be pretty interesting if you haven't seen my Laurel Run videos. It'll also save you a little bit of time because you won't have to watch the full videos of uh, me struggling through some of the off-trail stuff, which was not fun um, and time-consuming. So let's jump into it. Uh, I want to cover, the first thing I want to cover is before I went out to Laurel Run the first time, the reason I started looking there, I said I was looking for caves, I was really looking for summer. Um, <clears throat> the reason I went out there was because of the original interview that Ziggy had done with um, the jailhouse video that she had done with Fred Hill. He didn't provide a whole lot of information and um, some of it she misunderstood when he said a tunnel. She said Sensabaugh Tunnel, which is all the way at the other end of not even in in uh, Rogersville or even in Church Hill. It's over in Kingsport. Uh, so I had to extract the important information from that interview. And uh, let's take a look at that that interview first. Okay, this is the part. And this is the live where she's covering it. I can't find the original video. Uh, so we use the uh, section from this one to show you what alerted me about this guy. Um, six months ago and to start looking throughout Laurel Run based on what he says here. Another person I believe was involved that we had discussed yesterday. I discussed it with some with some of the bigger things and Yeah. They supposed to be uh, taking a certain area out. Fields Road or and I said they're supposed to be checking a certain okay. area out. Yeah. And they're more likely found Who's the other person that you, Marlena Crawford? No, no, he's been placed away. Oh, another person involved, you think? Yeah. Are you thinking? Who, Rick? Or Earl Taylor? Uh, no, he was Cotton Simpson. Cotton Simpson. And passed away in jail? No, or prison? he fell off a cliff on the backside of uh, Laurel Run Park. Oh, man. So right there, backside of Laurel Run Park was my first clue where to start looking. Of course, it's pretty vague. Um, backside depends on where your frame of reference is, where you're starting from. I tried to go to a cave. Wow, have I heard of this person before? Nope. Oh. Um, this is something I just found out myself that I was questioned about. And he had mentioned a bunch of stuff to me that Actually, I didn't take serious at first, but it's probably where she is. Oh my God! Pushed off. You know, it's where it started out at first is Laura Park. Is it? Isn't that where that waterfall thing is? Yes. Yep. Like this so since about time. There, there's a hidden. There's a hidden department in behind it. Is it that? Is that where the sensible tunnel is? Since about. That's where kind of say she, her body is. Wow. So how? So uh, oh, you talked. The police have questioned you since you've been in there. Yes. Wow. So how? So uh, oh, you talked the uh, way in jail. No. Or prison. Fell off the cliff on the backside of uh, Laurel Run Park. All right. So what we had was a cliff on the backside of Laurel Run Park, potentially a cave up there, um, and. The first thing I had done back when I first heard this was try to figure out anything about Roy Cotton Simpson. There is an obituary out there right here that actually shows his birthday, January 27th, 1963, uh, how old he was, that he was cremated. Um, very little information, although 
a little it didn't take very much digging to see that he worked for Warriors Path State Park and that he was an avid hiker and fisherman. And I'm trying to remember how I got his address. There it is. So I looked up Roy Len Simpson Rogersville, Tennessee address. Was able to find his home address. One oh nine uh, 1019 Mountain View Road, Roy L. Simpson, so that's definitely him, 1019, 1019 Mountain View Road, um, and I'm actually going to show you that clip first because I want to show you that location. Let's go to satellite view. So this was his, this is his house, or was his house along Mountain View Road and I noticed this road back here goes right to the back side right near Laurel Run Falls so this whole area was of interest to me this whole area um, the reason was because of the news report of the forest fire I had found where he fell man rescued from Hawkins County wildfire I think this was one of the first things I found out about him when I was Googling his name originally. And there's the uh, the interview In here. New York City, who firefighters were rescued yesterday, he says that he is very thankful for their help. It was some major deal getting just getting out of there. Trapped in a small ditch in the woods behind his Bay's Mountain home. Right there. Roy Simpson says he nearly lost his life Tuesday evening. Got down in there and then... All of a sudden, I couldn't get out. Roy is no stranger to exploring the mountain woods. He says climbing into ditches was a favorite pastime as a child, but the growing wildfire turned a childhood joy into a nightmare. I heard people hollering at me, and, and they'd come to save me. So we've had to go in and try to locate him. Uh, once we located him, he was off the backside. We ended up having like seven firefighters that got pinned in down on the bottom. Captain Frank Vaughn with Carter's Valley Volunteer Fire Department says two people were injured when they fell, but everyone is okay. Nearly 24 hours later, he and his men, along with the Goshen Valley Volunteer Fire and the Forestry Service, are all back fighting that same fire. Fire's moved on around, getting close to the structure, so right now we're doing structure protection. I thank them very much. I never made it out. Roy Simpson doesn't have any plans of going back into the woods again. He says he's forever grateful that all the members of the team who rescued him are okay. In Hawkins County, Curtis McLeod, News Channel 11. So they said in a ditch or a hole in the back side of, on the back side of his, behind his house, which told me that it was <clears throat> definitely an area out here. And since I didn't know much more about Roy, except for what Fred had also said about him falling from a cliff near Laurel Run Falls or in a water, near a, a cliff around Laurel Run. Um, this was a, sp a whole area I just wanted to go through. <clears throat> and I could tell from satellite views uh, on Google Earth that there's roads, there's dirt roads that go all throughout here. So I would have wanted to take my Jeep, I wanted to take my Jeep up this road and then into the woods. I could see this road actually goes out here and then goes way along here. Exploring up the top side of this would have been ideal. Uh, let me show you what happened when I attempted to do that All right took me a while, but I finally found which one I had driven to The area behind Roy's house. Uh, it's the video Four months ago called off trail cave search at top of Laurel Run cliffs No one would know I did the drive based on the title. No one would know I went behind Roy's house Just because it was at the very end around the 1755 mark. So I'll show you the section, I'll show you the piece where I actually drove over there to try to get into that area behind Roy's house. See you next time.
His house is on the left right there. This is that road that goes into the woods. That's what it looks like. As you can see, private property posted signs. There's like three of them. There's a sign saying um, security cameras. It is well protected area. I'll tell you that right now. My Jeep probably could have gone down that ATV trail and I would have attempted it if it wasn't like this. Um, it's just inaccessible. Can't get to any of that land behind there. And as a matter of fact, if you go further along down that road, the property off to the right even has signs saying, you know, trespassers will, get, will be shot. So I wasn't going to mess around trying to go in that area. So one of the first things I did is, uh, and I'll show you the beginning of this video where I talked through my logic. Uh, I wanted to start searching from the riverside of Laurel Run, which I thought was the backside from Rogersville. And... Um, Literally, the first time I tried this, I just decided to go off trail. I thought I'd have to take the river to go to where the bottom of Laurel Cliffs is. There's like a creek that goes in there. And I decided to hike my way in there and see if there's anything on the on the bottom of the uh, ravine. This is more likely you're going to come across. And this was my thinking around that. I think this is where I describe. Search for Laurel Run Park. I love Google Earth. It shows um, a lot more detail than Google Maps. So there's Laurel Run Park right around along the river. If I zoom out here. You can see this whole area here is, is um, the entrance area that, that I want to. Uh, this is the whole grid really that I want to go through on this hike. Plenty of opportunities. You can see some steep drop-offs so with those shadows there. I'll zoom back in, get some terrain view here. And I'll see if I can swivel the map around so we can get a riverside view. and then go over to that that first opening you can see the uh, the cliffs right there on the left side of the park when you're facing it from the river and that whole area right there is a lot of shadows pretty deep cut in the mountain there so probably a lot of great opportunities to see some um, some Obviously, it says there's cliffs, so hopefully some cliffs, or at least large boulders, rock outcroppings that are big enough for some kind of cool cave formations. So that was mission number one. Um, and again, at this time, I was saying I was searching for caves. This was probably, I think, my first search area for summer. Um, or any evidence of summer. So I thought hiking through the ravine below the cliffs could turn up something. Um, I'll show you some clips of what that experience was like. Again, so you don't have to watch the whole video, but I'll show you where I found the creek and uh, what hiking in there was like. It was not fun. To do off trail hiking like this, it's a much better idea because uh, it's more likely you're going to come across snakes especially in a creek like this but we'll see what it looks like it might not be too bad and i'll just keep an eye out up the sides for anything interesting i will start making my way in there This was, this was not fun. <clears throat> and as I made my way in, I did start seeing some cliffs up above. Around where the Laurel Cliff area 
is on the map. Any kind of caves. This way is a little more promising. I'll be a difficult. I think the temptation to wear shorts today was really stupid. Yeah. Um, because when you're doing something like this, if you Let's see if I could find that where I saw the caves or the uh, where I saw the cliffs. Um, this part is just a steep, steep hill up the ravine. You can see no, no rock outcroppings. It's literally just a really steep rolling hill. Uh, you will notice around the corner there, another tributary um, around the other side of, and you know what? I could potentially, if I go far enough, run into the main laurel trail i would think i'm going around the back side of the park and i'm not sure where the intersection is so you never know which would um which would actually be nice because it means that that i've taken a look at this at least this whole stretch i'm just hesitating because in that last tributary i saw it almost looks like cliffs up there mm -hmm. you can't you can't see it and again it it could be leaves on the back side of a hill when it's this steep um, and from a distance, the leaves um, change the coloring and what looks like could be rock, you end up there and it's just a, a steep, a very steep incline like this with just um, just dirt, no rock or anything like that. There's, as far as I can tell from what I've seen so far, there is no indication of any kind of cave uh, in this first section. It's leveling out up here, this So, at this point, and since there were so many leaves on the trees, I couldn't tell if the rock I was seeing at this point was actually a cliff or not. And in my later video, uh, once I once I went off trail to the top of this cliff and walked all the way around, I actually got to where those stone, those huge boulders slash cliff was, and I'll show you that a little later. But um, this was the bottom side of the cliffs either the next one or at some point I had gotten to the top and I'll you'll see what the top end looked like looks like and what those what the cliffs actually look like up there off trail um, that was pretty much it for this one I went all the way to as far as I could I noticed that there was no rock faces that would present any potential cave I was searching what I didn't say on camera is I was searching every hollow log every potential loose rock with any holes or anything all along this creek and um, didn't find anything which it would have been surprising to find anything because the person who brought anything in here would have had to do the same level of energy that I was doing to search so that was my first hike into Laurel Run at the bottom of Laurel Run cliffs the next actually yeah the next one I did was back on the trail. This was all the trail hike. Um, I know I went up to what they call Canna Canabrake Mountain Overlook, which is a trail off to the right, off of Laurel Run Trail, which few people go on. Um, and I can't remember, I think I also scouted some of the other waterfalls. So I'll show you what I explored there, little clips from this one. All right, so this Overlook Trail is right at the beginning of Laurel Run Trail. So you take that right and it goes up to that Canterbury Mountain Overlook. Uh, again, as I was searching through here, I was just looking for any opening, any openings, any caverns, any caves. When I did spot anything off to the side, uh, potential holes, I was looking out for wells. Uh, again, I was searching everywhere, even though I wasn't showing it on camera. So this whole area, at least near the trail, pretty well searched. Um, I didn't go off trail in this case. I mean, every time either I or our family has been up to Laurel Run, like, like most of the people, we just walk right on past it. Now this is the actual overlook, uh, Canterbury Mountain Overlook. It's the front side of Laurel Run. You could see this beautiful view. Um, and again, what I didn't show on camera was, I, pe I showed myself peeking down under, um, but I literally like walked 
along this cliff area and, and looked down as far as I could. Um, it's mostly trees that would honestly have caught anything that was rolled or dropped down there. So um, again, I searched as much as I could in this general area before continuing on the rest of the trail. Now I think the rest of this, I just did the rest of the loop that goes back down to the main trail. Um, I will go forward to that part. And further down the trail than I want it to be, which is a lot of other places. But uh, there's a, this stream down here along the main part of the yeah. trail until you get to the water. Yeah, so that was it for this one. I basically scouted the whole over loop, overlook loop. Um, the next time I revisited Laurel Run again, I had decided to actually scout out the waterfalls and those er, those first cliffs along the trail. Uh, if you saw Jen and I in our recent video, we had a pretty clear view without the leaves, um, but this was the first time I spotted those and I knew I wanted to explore it, uh, those first cliffs, and then I actually in this one, I show the actual waterfalls. The first few, the very busy and well-visited Laurel Run Waterfall, <clears throat> which both Jen and I agree, there's no way anything is there. There's too many people there. And then the second one, I think that's where I do. I was just scouting for areas that I wanted to dive deeper into. And I'll show you some peaks of that. And this is actually a good example of this whole area is so tricky. I went down to this area here off the left side of the trail down to the stream because I saw some boulders that looked like something dark underneath, like an opening. <clears throat> see, so I went down there and I used off to the right. I think you can see it. Oh, no, it's actually straight ahead. Uh, and I just tried to zoom with my camera, with my cell phone. kind of up there in the distance right there but as you can see zoomed in and nothing but rock in the back it doesn't go anywhere nothing and it's so frustrating this whole park it's all like this from a distance it looks like a potential cave um, nine times out of ten if not more it, it's like this These are also near the trail. Don't know why I felt the need to search this area because number one, anything hidden there would be spotted by people walking by at some point. And secondly, I'm sure locals have walked through this area a million times looking for something. So, but I just did it, you know, it, I was starting to search lower runs. So um, I saw some kind of dark areas in the cliffs. I decided to just walk through them, check them out. It's very beautiful. And then this next scene is where I spotted those beautiful, huge white cliffs. And I did try to zoom in on those in this scene too. White, it really stands out. Get my phone. I'll show you a zoom up here of what it looks like, but um, not so much an opening or anything, but just a unique rock on the side of that cliff. It's just something that caught my eye. Uh, it doesn't look like, I mean, it doesn't look like a path goes up there. 
Um, and again, I don't see any dark, any dark shadow underneath or anything like that. It's just really interesting formation, rock. I think further along I saw more, if I remember correctly. Caves, less so than I am now. Sheer, cranny, um, but there are, you can see some cliffs in different areas, like up here, sheer, nothing at the bottom, no, no opening. It's just a lot of rocks up there. Uh, I would take, if I had a drone, I would probably go up to that one. Not because there's an opening, but just because it would be cool to get a closer look. So I, I saw some openings up there, um, and it, it looks like kind of a little, could be an animal trail, but there's some kind of path down there for sure. But um, I'll show you the clip here. Way up there, there's a, definitely a rock face. and But down below it, looks like there's a dark spot that could be a potential opening. Um, and then further down below, there's that. It looks like a, again, might be a path, but could also be a animal path. But there are some major cliffs up here. Take a look at this. Big cliffs up there. That's, <clears throat> and of course. So that is only one piece of, and I don't know if, how well you can see it in the multiple videos we've done that we've tried to show these cliffs, but they go so high and it's all rock like this. Um, again, it looks like from a distance there's openings, there's little dark openings, but this is facing the main trail. It is high, um, could potentially, someone could climb it, I suppose with, I would think you need ropes because of how steep it is, uh, but you'd have to use ropes or something to actually put something in, in a crevice or a um, small cave up in that area. But they are spectacular. Um, and someday when I get afford a drone, um, tempted to fly through. The only thing is you can see how thick it is, the leaves, the branches, a drone would just get caught in something. So it wouldn't be that easy. You'd have to get up close and I don't even know if it's possible, but someday. It's down here. There's these. Um, there, these definitely don't have caves. I remember seeing them before, but um, way up there, you can just see through the trees. Oh, it goes so high. The uh, white rock between the between the leaves. All right. This next scene is. Um, this first one is Laurel Run Falls. If you haven't seen it yet. I mean, there's tons of videos out there on this. Um, this was my first visit there to actually look for something. And you'll see, I mean, I didn't have a whole lot of hope for finding anything, but I decided, you know, just to kind of search through the, put a stick in the water, see if there's any weird openings, hidden compartments or whatever in, but I, deep down I knew such a popular area, well visited, not likely anything, but I went through the process. It is a beautiful waterfall. The water is so shallow, honestly, most of the time. That dark area, I would say hundreds of people, I'm sure, have just scoured through there, checking every single stone, uh, and it's rock solid back there. There's absolutely no openings, no nothing missing. Even underneath where you can see the rocks with crevices, they're not movable. They're solid in there and those crevices don't go very deep. Here I checked the top side and um, the back side of Lower Run. And I did see this weird mud, you'll see, I saw this weird mud area that almost looked like the rock the mud was on 
should have been movable and i wondered if it wasn't movable if it was movable and that's why there was mud because if it had been moved and see right here the um i thought maybe mud was coming up from underneath <clears throat> but you'll see i was kind of poking around the edges trying to get it up looking for drainage to see if water's flowing down in there and it didn't it's just uh a, de a depressed it's just like a you know, depression in the rock that collects everything over time. That's all that was. It's an interesting formation. I did break a stick. <laughs> I searched around the backside a little further down the stream. I didn't show how far I went. Um, there was nothing there, so got back on the trail. And then the next waterfall is definitely a deeper one. It's a smaller waterfall. And at, th at this point, I thought maybe once I could, I wanted to put my camera in there. This one's much deeper. Normally my GoPro is waterproof, so I could actually see if there's underground um opening uh can't today because i don't have my um i've got my my media mod on which is not waterproof today uh i've got to find my lid my cover battery cover and put that on before i can do that plus it's not sunny enough so underwater will be pretty much impossible to see anything honestly this was a uh, scouting trip i wanted to get some gps points of potential cliffs that way um, I wanted to see the depth of the waterfalls to see if there was really any opportunity for an opening uh, in the rock underneath the water. The other one, no way. It's only about a couple inches, if that. I walked right in. Uh, it's rock on the bottom, rock and dirt, nothing really. This one, can't see anything. It's pretty deep. Looks like it's pretty deep. Uh, and it could potentially go three, four feet, maybe more. So it'd be fun to kind of stick a GoPro under there uh, at some point, kind of wade in, see what that the rock looks like underneath there. S more sun would be nice because the sun would kind of go into the water and give more visibility to the GoPro. But I'm running out of light today. So that was, I think that was the end of this trip. Um, I just looked on the back side, looked at the other trails that kept going um, and the kept going in the direction the later videos when jen and i went we went down the kiner kiner creek trail um i had done the cabins in earlier videos not looking for anything um at that time so those cabins are other spots eventually maybe jen and i will go to but then there's also the trail to the right the the one that i have we haven't been down yet and that one goes to lager falls and toward the church. Um, I wish I had known all that information, but I'll show you the thinking and the research and how it progressed. Finally, got to that to that area to that information. So that was it for this hike. Um, the other one, the next one I went on was the balloon. I call this the balloon hike because it's. I finally went. I off-trailed, I found a way to get up to the top of the cliffs from the parking lot area. This was not easy, um, and it wasn't fun. I finally got some snake gaiters too, to protect my legs from potential snakes, and decided to go back and actually go off-trail. And actually go off-trail, walk up the ridge all the way to the top, and just circle around the cliffs, all around to the area on the map that says Laurel Cliffs where there's absolutely no trail and it was thick and tough to hike through, but I finally found the top. And then at the top, uh, the balloon thing happened, which was just surreal. So I will show you some, some cool clips from, interesting clips from this. The climbing part, which was the worst.
Yeah. <laughs> so this first part's the hardest. Very steep climb. It's still a climb up. But this is more like trails I've done before when you're climbing a hill, but it's uh, pretty high. I feel like it doesn't go that far, to be honest. I kind of feel like I see the top. You can see the park way down there. Uh, for those who want a timestamp, by the way, when I So, FYI, I was wrong. <laughs> it wasn't short. It kept going and going and going. Um, and then finally I got to the top. I'll show you where the top was of the view. Which was pretty cool, midsummer. And then I think what I was trying to do is I had the large opening, the dark area that I wanted to get around and see into for a potential cave on the on Google Maps on my phone. And I'll show you, I was kind of looking for that. And I could see I was on one edge, but I had to get around it to go down into it. So you can see that I'm on I'm on the edge of what I saw on that map and supposedly I mean you can see this side is crazy steep like I thought it was I'm gonna do what I said and work my way around and see if there's really a gradual drop a gradual way to get down there I don't I'm trying to see if I see any openings or any dark any dark areas so I could see anything on this side Kept on hiking around the edge, all the way around the edge. It took quite a while. Uh, luckily, I kept seeing signs of, like, um, just bullet casings. Looks like hunters go up in there, which I didn't realize was allowed, but it probably is. Um, and then once I got around the other side is where I got to the cliff itself and the balloon. And this is, you can see the top of this whole ridge it is the left side is the dark area the right side is the cliff it's just an amazing area uh bear droppings bear poop the cliffs are pretty amazing but I think up here is where I showed where I was in the previous video where I was looking up and I saw white rock. I finally find them here. Actually, so before I got to it, this is the scene where I find the purple balloon. And I had no idea at the time that it meant anything. So, uh, you know, when they let off those balloons at festivals and stuff, I just found where one ended up. Now, I am on the other side of the hollow. This is the steep side. It is very surreal walking down this side because it feels just like walking up that side, which means I'm going to have to climb all the way back up and around. I already knew that when I looked at the map. I just didn't think it was this steep. But it's very weird because th this ridge is just like this high point that when most people look at the map, they think the, the high point of this cliff is around here, around here, straight across to the other side of this gap. And this hollow is fascinating. I mean, it goes, it's definitely a deep cut in the mountain like I thought it would look like. So I'm going to try to find where I saw the cliffs. The creek I walked up and the rocks go. that I saw, there they are. 
much easier getting to them from this side. So as we can see, there's plenty of rocks. There are no caves. And I can see all along this, this whole ridge line here. And um, it's just all rocks. So let's descend down into the other side, this little hollow and, um, and see what's in there. So the hollow turned out to be essentially a valley, a cut right through the mountain. Um, and I discovered that it went down to the parking lot. If, if you're willing to hike this horrible Creek with a really steep sides, um, I ended up taking my chances. I think this is where I kind of was discussing it. I think I said on the video that I wasn't going to do that. And right after I was done saying that, I decided to just go for it. I have two options now. I can climb all the way back up to the top, all the way around that rim, back up the mountain, <laughs> and back down to the other parking area. Or a very tempting option is I can see in here, and I knew this would be the case when I got down to this point because it's right over the parking area, but this is an old creek bed. And the parking lot's right there, which is unfortunate because that means I probably could have gotten up into this uh, indentation up through there, but I swear I walked the entire parking lot and looked up to see if there was any access point, which tells me it's more likely this is only a fairly level creek at this point and probably right over the parking area, right over it is that steep drop off. So I'm gonna trust my instincts and head back up and go all the way back around to head back to the where I was before because. So my actual instincts after this was just do the creek and it ended up once I got to the bottom of the creek it went to a um, picnic area the the creek was kind of blocked off with chain so they don't like people going up in there I didn't know that so I just kind of skedaddled out of there and um, that was it for this video that was the, probably the hardest hike in Laurel Run that I had done and um, that was the off trail I think that was the off trail to the top of Laurel Cliffs. That was all, th those were all of the Laurel Run hikes before I took time off actually toward the end of the summer until November when I decided to just um, publish that talk where, where I just let everyone know that, you know, what I was really up to all those, all those um, weeks that I was spending in Laurel Run and what we would end up starting to do openly um and bring start bringing my wife with me and use every pretty much every potential skill um and advantage we have to try to start really diving in not half-heartedly um and the laurel run search uh changed gears at that point because all that time i had been using the backside of side of laurel run comment by fred uh, once I decided to actually start really digging in, um, I went after interviewing Fred myself, trying to go to the jail to talk to him, finally talking to him on the phone myself, and talking to Fred, um, <clears throat> I was told, um, when I talked to him on the phone, <clears throat> he explained a little more detail. Let's take a look at Laurel Run Park and I'll show you. Um, I, well, actually, before talking to him, I was trying to figure out what waterfall and cliff he was talking about. Um, it looked to me like the backside of Laurel Run would have been in here somewhere. <clears throat> and I had heard of a waterfall called Kiner Falls that was in this basic area, and it sounded exactly like what Fred was describing on the backside of Laurel Run, kind of a hidden waterfall, hidden cliff. So I was focused on Kiner Falls, um, and I had found this old 1990s video that I'll show you here, 15 years ago. That was like one of the only 
Let's see. Hawkins County. One of the only videos I could find showing um, how to get to this cave, or this, how to get to this waterfall. And so I knew based on what this guy said, he says here that you have to bushwhack a bit. Uh, Kiner Falls here, really cool area. Uh, we're kind of having to uh, push through the rhododendron here. Really neat area, just above Laurel Run Falls. So really neat area just above Laurel Run Falls. Sounded exactly what I was thinking of and where I needed to go. Um, and then <clears throat> I just kind of scanned through this whole video to see how long the trail was how long, and what, it, what the falls looked like so I knew what to look for. And that's exactly what uh, Jen and I saw. If you watched our most recent Laura Run video that Jen and I both went on, this is the waterfall we were able to find. Um, and then Jen didn't want to climb out around of the waterfall and out back on the back side. So I decided to come back and try to get on the back side, which I thought that Fred, that's what Fred was describing, go on the back side of this waterfall until you get to either the cave or the trash pile, which means you've gone too far. Um, if you haven't seen it, I'll show you um, the clip of that hike where I saw, I thought I saw the cliff, and then where I just went as far as I could and uh, what I found. All right, there's the waterfall. Got a lot of water today, but... We've got to get up on the back side over there. Last time we tried that way. Today, I'm going to go up this way. Because I think I could swing around and then walk up that ledge over there. It's a lot easier. Oh. I don't hear anybody. There's nothing around. There's the waterfall right there. And check out that cave up there. Actually, I'm not sure if it's just an overhang or not. Keep hearing things. So before I decided to go up to that cliff, or that what I thought was a cave. <clears throat> I wanted to walk down the stream just to make sure I wasn't missing any other even more significant cave and maybe even hit the trash pile so that I knew how, how far too far was. Um, so I spotted the cave here, hiked the stream, and eventually got to where I believed was the end. Property line. Yeah. Either property line or hunting trail. You never know. So I'm confident that was the property line. <clears throat> that was as far as you can go in Laurel Run without going on private property. Um, I spent some time searching the stream here, looking for any holes, any loose rocks, or anything disturbed. Uh, a little further, I found a homestead area up a hill and I decided to search that. I actually had spotted this weird metal kind of container which drew me up into that area. It's not a well. You can see the bottom right there, obviously. So what I'm going to do at this point, I think I know where I am. I think I know this trail. There are a lot of old homesteads around here. And so I essentially searched this whole homestead area. I went back and forth and back and forth. Uh, trying to do kind of a grid, looking for uh, old wells, <clears throat> kind of depressions, wet areas that might look like an old well or a hole or something, and I searched that whole area. Um, when I was down there, I finally went to the cave, where I, what I thought was a cave, the cave that I saw earlier down the stream, and so um, 
what I found there, I'll show you here. See, this is how light plays tricks on you. Once you get up close, I was standing pretty much along that creek over there. And from a distance, see that little, the shading under the rock right there look like an look like kind of an opening. It's just a, these overhangs from a distance are always deceiving. See this? If you're not up close, you never know that it just, it's just a, uh, you know, a little tiny crevice between the rocks and all of this. And up there too, that's where I was seeing from a distance. See those rocks? It. I will show you all what that looks like up. Pretty cool area, actually. But little caves like this, little overhangs are honestly a dime a dozen in Tennessee. That is one thing, the reason I added this text to this is because one of Jen's earlier readings had mentioned when you find, it didn't say a cave, it said a opening the, there were some steps to look at the the hole in the back and the light on the tree and I completely forgot about it at this point. While I was editing, I realized there are holes in the back, uh, kind of the back top, and I could see trees through it. And I realized um, it may be worthwhile stepping through that reading, those steps, and see if it leads to anything up above. So um, we'll probably go back at some point and go through those steps, look look through the holes, see if there's light on the tree, and I can't remember the other steps, we'll work through it. At some point, we're going back to Laurel Run anyway, um, for the reasons I'll say toward the end of this video. <clears throat> but at this point, uh, I just explored this a little bit. It's just kind of like air pockets. Go up in there to the opening up there. It's pretty cool. This rock though, don't want So th there was a point when I realized this wasn't a cave or it wasn't really what Fred Hill had described. I was, I got to the point of, I think further along where I was really losing hope that I'll ever find a cave or the cave. Kiner Falls as much as I can. Uh, as far as I th think Fred was saying, unless Fred expects that the Mr. Cotton walk through like, you know, miles of rhododendron and weeds and branches and trees trying to hide something, which I am doubting that more and more as time goes on. Maybe I'll be able to get that interview with the family member uh, who kind of stood me up today. I will try to hook up with with the family member. And, and at that point, I believe I headed back home um, after, and really started asking around. Um, finally got, I had one final phone call with Fred. I had a chance to get on the phone with him after this, and I'm like, I just asked him, look, I walked all the way to the end of that creek as far as I could go to the poppy line. There's no trash. Um, where is it supposed to come out on the Rogersville side? And I finally got the piece of information I really needed to know where to go exactly. And he said, Bowser Cemetery near Dunkard, Dunkard Church, which if you look at where we were going here, uh, above Lower Run Falls, this is Kiner Creek. I believe because it's a switchback and if you go straight you don't take a switchback you cross the stream and you go up in this area and there's Kiner Falls is along the trail because you could see I climbed up the hill and I was back on the trail not very secluded really I mean hikers were coming by didn't feel right and so I, once I realized that the other end and the trash pile is closer to this cemetery and that church it has to be down in here. The trash pile has to be down in this area, which means log. I believe Logger Falls is the waterfall that he was talking about. And even though I asked him on the phone, do you mean Kiner Falls? He said, yes, I think he was mistaken. Uh, I don't think, I think he knows there's a waterfall there, 
but not so much the name of it probably because you know when you're a local you know where the waterfalls are um, and he knows there's one in here um, the reason I realized it's it's Logger Falls is because you can find a map of Laurel Run Park uh, this map shows Lower Run Falls, Kiner Falls, Kiner Creek Falls, along the trail, right? And then this one down here is Logger Falls. And so I really believe that the actual cave is up. Is Either we could take Lower Run Trail, past Lower Run Falls, and then take this creek down to Logger Falls, just like this map shows. You take the creek down. And the cave is supposed to be in there somewhere. What Fred told me finally, and I, I asked repeatedly for as much detail as I could, and he said, if you go to Bowser Cemetery, park at Dunker Church, there's supposed to be a trail of some sort. It doesn't look like it to me because if there is a trail right here, you can see there's something going here. It looks like private property, and it looks like you have to pass private property to get to the creek um, that may be what locals do but I I can't do that so um, it looks like you could park at the church take the trail across private property get to the creek and according to Fred there's a trash pile I don't know if that's it that looks like a that could be a trash pile or no, it looks like a house but there's a, supposed to be a trash pile somewhere in here 600 to 1000 feet from the trash pile up here is the cave According to Fred, um, again, I didn't know whether to, I, it, I, it's hard to trust things Fred's telling me just because um, there's sometimes conflicting uh, things that make you doubt whether he's telling the truth. In this case, though, just this week, I finally found out from um, someone who knows the family I couldn't. I haven't been able to talk to the family directly yet, but someone who knows the family told me that Cotton was, in fact, this comes from the family. Cotton was, in fact, parked at the church for like two days in a row uh, during that time. I believe during the February time when when he fell. So, if that secondhand information is true, everything's pointing toward Roy Cotton Simpson parking at the church and doing something up in that area, just a little ways from that trash pile, wherever it is, near Logger Falls for two whole days. And if it is was in February when that happened, then that is where he fell. Uh, the obituary says that's when he fell. And so we might have actually finally isolated the place, the cliff, the cave, whatever it was, not far from the trail, according to Fred, where he was found. So um, that is why tomorrow, this week, um, we're going to go back to Laurel Run one last time. We're going to hike to Laurel Run Falls. We're going to take that creek. We're going to find Logger Falls and search for that cave and hopefully find it. And whatever it reveals or doesn't reveal, at least we have finally found the cave after all of this work. <laughs> <laughs> for weeks and months and as you can see everything I've just been trying to go through to find this myth mythical cave I think it's coming to an end I think we're finally going to find it so looking forward to tomorrow can't wait to get out there um, hope you enjoyed this blast from the past uh, how we got to where we are today and all the all the exploration in Laurel Run Park that I've been doing up until now thought you'd find it interesting rather than having to watch all those past videos a uh, bunch of little clips of what I went through. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.